Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can import a Slick 500 or Micrologics program into Studio 5000 to use with your Control Logics. Now, with RS Logics 5000, we had an older utility, and you're still going to use that older utility if you want to convert a project to like an L6 or an old L35e or whatnot. But if you're using Studio 5000 and an L7 or an L16, then um, you want to use the new utility. And I'm going to find the new utility by coming down here and just typing in RS Logics. And you can see it's called the RS Logics Project Migrator. So let's go ahead and start that up. And you can see here it looks almost identical to the old uh, uh, utility. Um, different images here so I'm gonna go ahead and choose slick 500 and you can see here it says uh, you want to save your program as a dot SLC well I happen to have RS logics 500 up and um, I have the application the demo application that comes with it open so I'm gonna do a save as and I'm gonna choose SLC library file and I'm gonna put it in the exported folder here okay I'm just gonna accept the defaults and that's done. So the next step here is go to Tools, Database, ASCII, Export, and uh, create a CSV for the symbols and addresses. So let's go ahead and do that. Tools, Database, ASCII, Export, um, CSV. Notice it doesn't say anything about these. I don't think these are going to come in. So we'll export them anyways. It doesn't hurt. OK, and I will also put that in the exported folder here on my hard drive. Bing, 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 all done. Okay, good. So now, what's the next step? Oh, select the file. Let's see. No, that's not where it is. It's in my documents. Convert, exported. There she is. And the documentations have the same uh, first name as the file. It's also called IC500 demo. So uh, we can leave that checked. We're not going to override any languages here. So we'll go to next. I like creating alias tags for symbols because they're very similar. So I like to get those symbols to come in as aliases. So we'll leave that checked and I will click on migrate. Okay, here we can see it says it's parsed. So we'll go to next. And now this is where you learn that it doesn't support RS Logics 5000. You can see somebody forgot to change the terminology. But look, I only can go back to version 21. And look, no L6s, no L35Es. So if I wanted to do, let's say, like an L24, right, and maybe version 24, um, that's cool, but that's Studio 5000, not RS Logics 5000. So let's go ahead and do Next. Now here it's asking, and this is, this is a good option if you have a Slick 500 rack, and you don't want to unwire the whole thing. It's asking, hey, you want to keep that uh, existing I.O.? I don't. I'm replacing this old Slick with a uh, Compact Logic. So let me go here and say replace all the I.O. And it says, okay, well, here's the I.O. that you have in that demo uh, project. Let's go ahead and replace it with 1769 I.O. here. See, I don't have a lot of options. I don't know why it gives me this 34 option here, but 1769, 1769. Okay, so those are my choices. And here, you got to be very careful about this. It still wants to place these uh, I.O. as a remote rack to your main processor, which if you're doing control logics would probably make a lot of sense. But I'm doing a compact logic, so I'm going to say no way, Jose, and click on next. OK, it's done. So let's go ahead and launch Studio 5000. And um, yeah, if you want to do RS Logics 5000 20 and below, you've got to get the older version of this, the version 2. This is version 3. And um, now this works great with control logics. A couple little issues with the compact logics we're going to see here in a minute that um, uh, where it puts the I.O. and how it maps the I.O. is a little bugged. But um, again, if you're going to do the old versions, I have a whole write-up of that on the automation blog. You can see step-by-step -step how to use the old version there as well as the new version step-by-step. Um, -step. And so here comes Logics Designer. It's saying, uh, what do you want to call this thing? We're going to call it IC500 Demo. And now in mere moments, we will have it up. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is let's go to help here and talk about what you have to do after it imports because like almost everything comes in, right? But you still have some work to do. And it's under the post translation user responsibilities. And you can see that here. 
one of them, step two, is map your I.O., okay? But there's some other things that happen. And uh, just go over quickly a couple of the errors here. If we come into the main ladder routine, we can see here this alias, right? It's having a problem here. And if we take a look at that, let me go ahead and edit that. We'll go to, let's see here, where do I want to go? Edit properties, right? You can see it's uh, mapped to local three output data zero, which would have been great if we would have put that output card in slot three in a uh, control logics chassis. But take a look over here. Look at my I.O. Because I'm using an L24, the expansion I.O. starts at uh, slot four. You know, if I go in there, um, I can't use one, two, and three. So there's some work you have to do after after uh, the fact, but you can see here everything's been imported, and um, other things you'll find is like the the time bases in the Slick 500. They could be like a one second or a point zero one second, where all time bases in Control Logics are one millisecond. So you can see here this limit test on the accumulate value. Well, that was one to forty, but that was probably between one and forty seconds. This timer probably had a one second time base. So you can see the PCE here. You'll have to go back and check that out because you may have to update those numbers. It may need to be between 1,000 and 4,000 now, and, or 40,000 actually, instead of one to 40. So with that said, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please feel free to leave them over at my free forum, theautomationforums.com. Now, if you want to help me make more videos and support my work, uh, please feel free to pledge $1 a month or more over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And if you want to learn all about MicroLogix, RSLogix, or Control Logics, or PanelView Plus, or Micro 800, or a bunch of different topics, check out my online school at theautomationschool.com. I have all kinds of courses over there. I think you'll find them a great value and about 10% of the course of going away to the factory. And with that, that's the end of this video. Until next time. Peace.